As a small time artist, commissions are a big part of my revenue, around one third of it, but how do I keep my clients happy while keeping my sanity? Let's take a look into my freelance process. I'm working on John Deere's album cover and using his music in the background. Because we already have a good relationship, this whole interaction is going to be relaxed and chill, which is how I like it. I'm only saying this because you're going to see me break a lot of rules and guidelines I'm telling you because we've worked together and we have that trust so it's a lot more chill. And keep in mind that there are customers out there that expect a lot more and maybe way more pushy about revisions so I'm going to give you some tips on how to avoid those roadblocks. Part 1. Negotiation Keep in mind this is your client and it's your job to bring their vision to life, not yours. For the most part. You want to ask them questions about their vision, for example, what color slash vibes are they going for, what art style do they have in mind, do they want a more elegant or chaotic design, minimalist or maximalist, you know the idea. Also ask them what size do they need and what it's going to be used for. For example, a screen printed shirt is going to have way more restriction than like an album cover or like a Twitter avatar. Having them give you some reference is always going to help you. I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of the times the clients don't know the nitty gritty, but every piece of information helps. Part 2, Payment. Once you roughly know what they want, it's time to talk about money. This can vary a lot. Estimate the time, skill, and relationship you have with the client. For me, since it's just a skull with words, it'll take me about two hours to finish if I don't do thumbnails or have to do a lot of revisions. Minimum, I should be charging him at least around $80 for this artwork. But because this is my boy we talking about, I charged him around $45 and he paid me $47. And I know I'm hella underselling, but here's why I'm going so low. Number one, he's another artist who is also grinding and we all out here trying to make it and this is just giving back to the community. And number two, I love working with him. He's chill, he gives me a lot of creative freedom and that's what I like in my clients. He tells me to go crazy and that's what I want. He's more likely to come back to me and I can probably use his music for free in the future so yeah I don't mind giving him such a fat discount and at the end of the day networking and building these relationships are important as being an artist now that we got pricing out of the way it's time for payment and this is very important for new clients so either have them pay full up front before you work or half and half half to start and then half when you finish and that way they're gonna be invested and they can't ghost you as easily after you give them the work and I've had this happen to me where like I give them the drawing because I busted out so quick and then they just run away and I never get the money and I don't see them again and it's very frustrating. So so as a general rule, I normally don't start on things to at least get some of the money. But once again, I'm gonna be a hypocrite and because he's a good friend of mine, I'm not really worried. So I just had him pay at the end. Part three, planning. So there's many different ways of doing this. Some people like to start out with a mood board. Some people like to get a color template going on, but I like to be reckless and get right into it. So normally in this phase, you would do thumbnails, which are like four to seven small sketches. This is a good way to see if the client likes what you're designing. And if they don't like it, it's just, it's simple. They can just say no not a big deal to get rid of your small sketches and it's a lot easier to have six quick sketches than to redo a finished piece six times because of miscommunication. Part 4 Doing the Project So for this project my friend wanted a skull with an antler and some antlers going into its ears. He wanted the colors to be black, white, and red. And once again, I'm gonna break my own rules and I'm just gonna go straight into the doodle. The title was Dionysus Incorporated and Dionysus reminded me of the Greek god of wine. So I decided to make the skull out of wine dripping into some sort of chalice portal. Did he ask for this? Absolutely not. But at the same time, if I have to scrap it, I have to scrap it and I won't be too mad. But I wanted to see this idea through. Plus, if he didn't like it, I just had to desaturate the skull and get rid of the drips, and it's an easy fix, so screw it. Alright, let's look at the checklist. Skull? It's made out of wine, but check. Antlers going into the ears? Eh. Did I spell the title right? Nope. Alright, it looks good enough for me, so I'm just gonna send it through, and I'm so nice, I'm even gonna make a dark and light variation just for him. 
All right, all done. Time to kick back and relax. And we got feedback. Get comfortable with feedback, guys. It's nothing personal, and it's the way she goes. So let's see what he wants. Number one, spell the title right. All right. Number two, make the skull white. Easy fix. Number three, make the antlers look more like antlers and make it go into the ears. Okay. And then number four, looks like we got an extra request to put the skull on a bed of roses. Yay. Easy. So I only have to scrap three fourths of the drawings, and this is why I should have done a thumbnail first. So I know revisions can be frustrating at times, but in this instance, I can't really be upset because I was going gun ho and just started swinging away, so it was definitely on me, but I really wanted to see how the skull looked and I would rather go for it for the sake of experimentation. Alright, time for the revision. For the most part, it was all pretty easy. I saved a new document, so I still had the old one, and made the skull black and white. And then I reworked the antlers and just did a little bit more of a minimalist vibe. But there's only one problem. I don't know how to draw roses. They always look like blobs with spirals or something, so I tried going on Unsplash just to steal the roses from there, make it look almost like a collage or something. And Unsplash is free, so I don't have to worry about copyright. And even though I probably should have credited the photographer, I'm not going to. JK. So the collage thing wasn't working, so I'm gonna try tracing it, and it just, it looks just as bad. And that's probably because my perspective was off, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take red blobs and call it my minimalist style. All right, time to add the text and we're all done. Time to resubmit it and call it a day. And oh, looks like he likes the first one better. I'm not gonna lie, this is super common. You're most likely gonna make five or six changes and then completely ruin the designs and then the client is gonna be like, I like the first design. And you know what, that's okay. As annoying as this can be, try to be patient with your clients. And picture this, when you're working on a drawing, you'll probably end up making a bunch of on the fly edits as you work through the image. And most likely it's gonna be completely different than the original blueprint. And that's just the creative process. You as the artist have a lot more knowledge on what works and what doesn't. And think of all the last minute decisions you've made while working on a painting. You've probably made 15, 20 changes and you know what you're doing. Now put yourselves in the shoes of the client who doesn't know what they're doing, who isn't as fluent in art. They're gonna be stumbling and they're gonna make a lot more mistakes. And sometimes they ask for some ugly revisions. You just have to keep the peace and entertain their ideas. You may see that it's gonna be a bad idea, but they don't exactly know and sometimes they just have to see it and it's as easy as that and backfires, but that's a whole nother can of worms I can get into. You can't fault someone for wanting to try an idea, but you can make suggestions and just try to be patient and just remember how important communication is. Anyways, I made the last few changes and we called it a day and both of us were happy. I'm definitely lucky that John Deere is such a chill dude because I definitely broke all of my rules. He gave me some parameters and I completely ignored it, but he ended up liking it and that's I'm grateful for that creative freedom and I love working with him. Anyways, if you guys like the music in the background, that's all him. Go ahead and check out my boy. I'll put the link in the description below. Well, now that we know how to work with clients, how do we draw? Well, check out this video over here.